The Secure Fence Act of 2006 specified the construction of at least 700 miles of double-layered fencing along the Mexican border. Some say it is really more than 800 miles. It depends on how you measure the curves along the Rio Grande and Colorado rivers. Let's see how they have done. As of early January 2009, there were 526 miles of fencing and vehicle barriers along the Mexican border. Vehicle barriers are not designed to stop people. Leaving these out, we are left with 278 miles of fence along the border. Where is the fence and how does it work? In the following, we will look at each border patrol sector from San Diego to the Gulf of Mexico. For each sector, we will show when new fencing went in and what happened to apprehensions of illegal aliens as the fence was installed. We will use charts such as this one, where two lines are shown on each graph. On the left, we show the number of miles of fencing installed, and on the right, the number of apprehensions of illegal aliens by the Border Patrol. The blue line shows the number of apprehensions. The red line, miles of fencing. Apprehensions are based on the average of December and January of each calendar year, as this reflects the most recent construction activity. The San Diego sector covers 66 miles of the border with Mexico. There are 38 miles of fencing, or a little over half. Fencing along the border just north of Tijuana, Mexico, is 13 miles long, with 10 miles of double-layered construction. Three miles of double-layer construction, reaching the Pacific Ocean, will be completed by June of 2009. The existing double-layered fencing, or 10 miles, has been in place for at least 10 years. Most of the remaining fencing in the San Diego sector consists of old airfield mat type, about 10 feet high. And there are many breaks. Between 2005 and 2008, there was little change in the amount of fencing in the San Diego sector. Beginning in the summer of 2008, additional fencing was being constructed here at Tecate and Campo and here at Hakumba. This chart shows the correlation between fencing and apprehensions for the San Diego sector. The blue line shows the amount of fencing installed. The red line shows apprehensions. There appears to be little correlation between the amount of fencing and the rate of apprehensions of illegal aliens, although apprehensions did drop as new fencing was installed in 2008. The lack of impact of fencing may be because only about half of the sector has fencing and most of that is considered to be ineffective. Where double-layered fencing was installed at Imperial Beach and Chula Vista, apprehensions dropped by more than 95 percent. The El Centro sector is responsible for 70 miles of the border. Until mid-2008, fencing was limited to a small stretch adjacent to Mexicali, Mexico. From mid-2008 to early 2009, the entire border between Calexico and Yuma, Arizona was fenced in. There appears to be a correlation between miles of fencing and apprehensions at El Centro. However, there still exists a large section west of Calexico that remains open. Also, the fencing at Calexico itself is considered to be of minimal effectiveness. The Yuma sector is responsible for more than 80 miles of the Mexican border. Yuma was the focus of a major enforcement effort that began in 2006 with the arrival of the National Guard. At about the same time, the National Guard began construction of a second layer of fencing near the San Luis Port of Entry. As of January 2009, Yuma had 54 miles of border fence and 14 miles of vehicle barrier along the Colorado River. Operation Streamline was activated at the Yuma sector in December of 2006. The operation targets illegal immigrants for immediate prosecution for illegal entry. Violators face punishment of up to 180 days in jail, after which they are formally deported. There is a strong correlation between the construction of border fencing and apprehensions at Yuma. The Tucson sector is responsible for 238 miles of border with Mexico. As of January 2009, there were 63 miles of fencing in place. 74% of the border had no fencing. The Tucson sector contains major smuggling corridors. One corridor is called the Amnesty Trail. It runs from the border to the vicinity of Tucson, Arizona. Hundreds of people are on Amnesty Trail, 
every day and every night. The Amnesty Trailhead is protected by vehicle barriers. These barriers are not designed to stop people, and they may not even stop vehicles. The original Secure Fence Act of 2006 specified the construction of double-layered fence along this section of the border. The amendment to the Act in December 2007 allowed the DHS to drop this requirement. DHS decided to build this kind of fence instead of this kind. The Amnesty Trailhead is also the location of the ill-fated SBINet virtual fence system. Additional funding for SBINet was included in the Economic Stimulus Bill signed by the President. There was no funding for border fences. Another corridor runs through the Huachuca Mountains near Sierra Vista. These private videos show people on trails in these mountains. Thirty miles of the border in this area is protected by either railroad rails or stock fencing. Operation Streamline has not been implemented in the Tucson sector due to the volume of apprehensions. There appears to be a correlation between the amount of fencing and apprehensions in the Tucson sector, especially as new fencing was installed in 2008. Effectiveness of the fencing system is limited, however, as 74% of the border remains unprotected against foot traffic. The El Paso sector is responsible for 268 miles of border with Mexico. In 2005, New Mexico Governor Richardson declared a border emergency. Later that year, a unit from the Stryker Brigade of Fort Lewis, Washington, was deployed along the border west of the Columbus Port of Entry. Later, these units were replaced by the National Guard. The Guard built an 18-foot, 3.7-mile steel beam fence along 3.7 miles of border, mostly west of the Columbus Port of Entry. By mid-2008, the border fence at Columbus had been lengthened to 6.1 miles. Customs and Border Protection reported, quote, Apprehensions in 2008 decreased by approximately 67 percent along the New Mexico border, thanks in large part to fencing and the acquisition of other resources in southern Luna County. From El Paso south along the Rio Grande, approximately 34 miles of new fencing was completed in early 2009. This fencing is approximately 18 feet high and is considered to be effective since much of it was added to existing fencing making a double layer. Border fencing appears to have played a major role in the 87 percent reduction in apprehensions at El Paso. The Marfa sector is responsible for 510 miles of border that follows the curves of the Rio Grande River. Marfa has relatively few apprehensions. There are no new fences at Marfa. The Del Rio sector covers 210 miles of border with Mexico. Operation Streamline was implemented in the Del Rio sector in December of 2005. It is credited with an approximate 68 percent reduction in apprehensions. No significant fencing existed as of early January 2009. The Laredo sector is responsible for 171 miles of border with Mexico. Operation Streamline was implemented in the Laredo sector on November 1, 2007. No significant new fencing existed as of early January 2009. The Rio Grande sector covers 316 miles of border. There was insufficient progress in fence construction to assess impact. The data presented here suggests very strongly that border fences can reduce illegal immigration significantly. In some sectors, such as San Diego and Tucson, fence coverage ranged from about 25 percent to 50 percent, and much of that is ineffective. Where finer data were available, such as Imperial Beach and Chula Vista, the fence is shown to be very effective. As of early January 2009, the Department of Homeland Security had constructed 200 miles of fencing designed to stop people from walking across the border. 35 miles of that fencing is double layered. In other words, DHS completed only about 5 percent of the 700 miles of double layered fencing mandated by Congress. Had the original Secure Fence Act been implemented, illegal immigration would have been reduced significantly. 
Congress should reinstate the original Secure Fence Act of 2006, extending coverage to 1,000 miles of double-layer fencing and providing full funding for the effort.